just joining. This is Shania with Scott Leroy Marketing, and today we are going over our website 201 class. We're going to start by logging into command. You're going to want to go to agent.kw.com. Just a reminder, your username is not case sensitive. However, your password is. If you have any trouble signing in, you can click on the little eyeball icon here just to confirm that your password is keyed incorrectly. Once you have that typed in, you can click sign in. So once we sign in, before we jump into our website, we are gonna make sure our marketing profile is completely up to date. So to get to our marketing profile, we're gonna click on our name in the top right corner and we're gonna go down to settings. Once this page loads, we're gonna to go to the left side and go under connect settings and then marketing profile. So you do always wanna be sure that this toggle on the top right is green. This means that your marketing profile is feeding to your marketing, which includes your website and all other marketing materials. So we'll start from the top down. So we have our headshot photo. You do wanna be sure your headshot is cropped down to a perfect square. If it looks distorted in this circle here, that is how it will look on your marketing. If you have any trouble cropping that down, you can email it over to us and we can get that updated for you. Next, we have our team logo. So if you are not on a team, you can throw in a KW logo or realtor logo, anything to put something in that placeholder. The reason we recommend this is because if you don't have a logo uploaded here, some of the marketing does automatically pull that logo in. So if you don't have an image uploaded, it will show up as a broken link. So next we have our details. So you do wanna be sure that your name reflects the name that is on your license, just to make sure you're following compliance. We have our license number. If you are on a team, your team name can go here. Professional job title. If you have a custom slogan that you use for your business, you can add a slogan in here. We have our designations and credentials. If you're not sure how to get this little symbol here after Realtor, if you hold down the Alt key on your keyboard and then type in 0174, that will give you that little symbol there. Below that, we have military affiliations. So if you are affiliated with the military, you have the option to choose from active duty, reserves, veteran, military spouse, gold star family, military family member, National Guard, and supporter patriot. Once you select your affiliation from this list, it will then bring out another drop down menu to select the branch. Once you have that selected, be sure to click on add to save those selections in there. Under that, we have our bio. You do wanna be sure that your bio reflects in here the way that you want it to look on your marketing. So if you do have these line breaks in between paragraphs or anything like that, this is where you wanna make sure that is reflecting right. Next, we have our contact information. So your mobile phone number and office phone number. And if you have a fax number, you can also add that in here. If by chance you are in another country, you can change the country code by clicking the drop down here. Next, we have our email. So this is going to be your business email. You are not required to use your KW email in this box. If you do have a different email address that you use for your business, you can add that in here instead. Most likely if we set you up, you'll probably see your KW email there. Next, we have our website URL. So this is where your website will go. Keep in mind if you are using the command 
website URL, you do not want to have www here as the command sites do not work with that format. We do recommend being sure you have the HTTPS here as that is what makes the link clickable on your marketing. If you have a custom domain that you are using for your business that you have redirected to your website, you can use your custom domain URL here. Or if you have a custom website completely, you can throw that in there. You don't have to use the command URL in this box if you have something else that you use for your business. Under that, we have our Market Center information. So your Market Center logo here. I will point out, you'll see the logo here looks distorted. That will correct itself on your marketing. The logos automatically correct themselves. It's only the headshot that needs to look clear in your marketing profile. For the Market Center address, always be sure this is reflecting the correct information. If by chance you've transferred Market Centers or your Market Center has relocated, always make sure that address is current and up to date. Next, we have our compliance items. So our legal footer text, if you have any information that your Market Center requires for compliance, you can add that in here. You do not need to add the each office is independently owned and operated verbiage here as that's automatically on your marketing. So if you were to type that in here, it will show up twice. Below that, we have our legal footer links. So for our Texas agents, they require their commission information links in here. New York agents have their standard operating procedures. If there are any other links that your market center requires for compliance reasons, you can add them by clicking the add link button. You would put in the title and then the URL. If you need to delete a legal footer link, you can simply click on the red trash can icon on the right side over here. Next, we have legal footer images. So these are thumbnail size images. They're very small. You'll see in the description, they are 128 by 48 pixels. So you probably don't wanna use this to do any big advertisements, but if you have any other credential logos that you wanna add in, or maybe vendor logos that you're required to have on your marketing, you can add those in there. Just keep in mind that they do show up very small. Next, we have our social media links. So this is where you can link your branded business pages. So you have the option for Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, if you have a YouTube channel, as well as your LinkedIn profile. So you can add any of those links in here. You'll see it does say it is optional, so none of them are required. If you don't have all of those or you don't want any of them on your marketing, that is completely fine. You can leave them blank. Once you have those entered in there, it will show in the dropdown on your website. Last at the bottom, we have Google Analytics ID. So Google Analytics is used to track the traffic coming to your command website. Right now, command is not updated to match the new updates within Google Analytics, but once they have updated that, the sync should work properly. So if you need any assistance setting that up, you can email us. Once you have all your changes in here, be sure to click save at the bottom. And that will refresh the page back to the top and let you know that your marketing profile was successfully saved. So now that our marketing profile is up to date, we can head to our website. So we're gonna go to the consumer tab. If you are still getting comfortable with what each of these images are, if you click on the red KW in the top left corner, it will bring out a description for each icon. So we are gonna go into consumer. So if we've already set you up or you went through the website 101 class last week, you should already have your first three initial pages, which will be your about us, your contact page and your about me page. So today we're gonna to go over adding some additional pages, which will include a download my app page, a mortgage calculator, a school search page, Keller covered, what's my home worth, testimonial pages, as well as how to add a custom page using Google Docs. 
So to get started, we will click on the create new page in the top right corner. And you're going to get a pop up box here asking if you want to create a page on your agent site or if you want to create a landing page. So the difference between this is a page on your agent site is pretty much how it sounds. It's going to be a page that you're going to add to your command website. A landing page is a standalone one-off page. So those will not show up on your command website. They will be individual website pages. And we actually do have a class on landing pages that will be next Tuesday. So we're going to leave this as on my agent site and we're going to click on create page. So the first thing I'm going to do when I start a page is rename that page. So I'm going to go to the top left corner and click on this text box, highlight that and delete it. The reason we want to do this is if you leave it as is, you'll see there's all these random letters and numbers here. So when you go to activate your pages on your website, you're going to have a hard time designating which page is which if you don't rename them. This makes it a lot easier to sort through your pages as you're adding them. So we're going to start with a download my app. And once you type it in and click off, it automatically saves your text there. So on the right hand side, we have these widgets. So these are all things that we can add to our website page. So I'll go over each of these widgets with you. So if you're on a team, you can use this team widget to showcase your team members. Agent profile is pretty much how it sounds. It's your profile from your marketing profile with your bio, your name, and your contact information. Contact form, again, pretty much how it sounds. It's a form that they can fill out to contact you. Testimonial carousel and testimonial list. So those are two different ways that you can showcase your testimonials on your website. Company profile. So you can use this to showcase your market center or you can use it to showcase any custom content. This can be customized however you would like to use it. Testimonial capture form. So this is how you would capture testimonials. And we will be adding this page later. And then we have our download my app widget. So this is the one that we are going to grab for this page. And to add widgets, you just simply click and drag it over. Once you see that green line there, you can drop it in. Down at the bottom, if we click this little drop down content blocks, you have an option to add images and text boxes. Keep in mind that when adding either of these, you do have to have a widget in the page in order to save or make any changes, which we'll go over that on the next page that we create. So for this page, all we need is this download my app widget. So we'll click on configure widgets in the bottom right. There we go. So this is our app. So this pulls right from our profile and website information. Your branded app URL is down here. So we'll save and apply. And then we're gonna save changes in the top right corner. So once we save changes, it's gonna ask us if we want to publish our page. If we were just setting up this one page, I would go ahead and click on yes. But because we are gonna be doing multiple pages today, I'm going to select no. That way I can create all my pages and then go in and publish them all at once. So there's that page here in the list. So now I'm going to create a new page again. Again, on my agent site, this will be the selection for all the pages we are doing today. And create. So for this one, we will do our mortgage calculator. So I'm going to rename that in the top left. So for this, we are going to use our class notes to grab the code that we need for our calculator widget. To do that, we are going to need to use a text box. So before we use our text box, we want to be sure we have a widget in here. 
So you can choose whichever widget you prefer to add to the page. You can use a contact form or you can use the download my app widget, whatever you think works best for you. So I'm gonna grab the contact form widget and then I'm gonna go under content blocks and I'm gonna grab a text box and I'm gonna drag that over above the widget. So wherever that green line is, is where your item is gonna drop. So if I wanted to put it below the contact form, then I would go down to the bottom and put it down there. So before I enter any text here, I'm gonna to go to my class notes and I am going to look for mortgage calculator, which is right here. So we're gonna grab this code that's in the text box here. And we're gonna start at the bottom and highlight this whole code here. Once that's highlighted, we'll right click and copy. And then we're gonna go back to our website. So we're gonna delete this text here. And then we're gonna right click and paste. Now, before we do anything else, click off of it or anything, we're gonna highlight that text again. And then we're gonna click on this little link button here. That is what's going to make the widget active. So there is our mortgage calculator. So anyone that's on your website will be able to customize these numbers however they would like to, and it will automatically adjust here on the right. And then we'll have our contact form here at the bottom. So we don't need to configure any widgets on this one. So once we have that in here and saved, We'll save changes in the top right. And again, we are not gonna publish yet. So now we're gonna do the same thing and create another page. So for this one, we're gonna do our school search page. So for this one, we will need our class notes again. So on our class notes, if we find the school search, which is here, the great schools widget, we have some instructions on how to set this up in here. So we're gonna use the agent profile widget. So we're gonna go in and grab the agent profile and drag that over. And then we're gonna be customizing this whole widget to reflect our school search. So I'm gonna to go to the class notes again. So we're gonna configure the widget and we're gonna edit these text boxes that are listed. So I'm gonna click on configure widget in the bottom right, click on agent profile. So we're gonna change the page title. I'm gonna to go to my class notes and find the page title here. And I'm gonna highlight and copy and paste that in there. Next, we have our rolling company box. So I'm gonna delete everything from there. Go back to my class notes and grab the text for rolling company. And if you wanna use different text or verbiage for these boxes, you can customize these however you would like to. You don't have to follow the text that's in the notes if you wanna use something tailored to you. So next we have bio title. So under bio title, you'll see our notes say, just put a space as a filler, click space bar once and then click off it. So the reason for that is the bio title is a requirement. So if you don't put anything in there, you'll get this red error message stating that agent name is required. However, if we click in the text box and just hit the space bar to put a space there, it overrides that error. So next we have our agent bio box. So if you need to make this bigger to see it better, you can click on the right corner of the box till you see those arrows and then click and drag it down to give you a better view of that. So we are gonna delete everything in this box. And now we're gonna go back to our class notes 
And we're going to follow this link here that is in our notes. So we're going to fill this information out here at the top, and then we'll be able to get our widget code that we're going to use in that bio box. So you'll put in your location. You'll leave the size as it is. You don't need to change these numbers at all. Your email. And your website URL. Once you have those filled in, you can click on the Terms and Services checkbox, and then you'll be able to click on that Get Widget Code button. So once we click that, this code will pop up. So we're gonna select this whole code here, and we're gonna right-click and copy. Now we'll go back to our website page. So before we paste that code in this bio box, we're gonna make sure that this is centered on the page. So if we use our brackets and type in center and then paste that code in, and then same thing at the end, brackets and center, that will confirm that it will be centered and not off to the left or off to the right. And then down at the bottom, we have our contact information. So we can leave this as is, unless you need to update this contact info. This should automatically pull from your marketing profile. So this is why we always wanna make sure that profile is always up to date. So once we have that finished, we'll save and apply. And that should automatically update on your left side view here. So there's our school search widget. You can change from map to school list, or they have the option to search for another area as well. So this will automatically default to whatever location you put when you're filling out that widget form here. If you don't want to have your headshot photo here and you want to use a school related image, you can certainly change that. So if we go back up to the top, if you delete this image, you can then upload a new image to use in that circle. Um, if you are using your own images, we do recommend using either free stock images or something that you've taken yourself and not just random images off of the internet just to avoid any copyright issues. So once we have this saved, we'll go ahead and save changes in the top right. And again, we're not gonna publish quite yet. So now we'll create a new page. And next we are gonna do our Keller Mortgage Keller Covered page. So again, we'll go back to our class notes here and we're gonna look for Keller Covered, which is right here. So we're gonna to wanna to follow this link here. So this is how you are gonna get your link to brand this to you as the agent. So when you open this link, you're going to want to scroll down to step one and search for your name. So I'm just going to search for a demo link here for this one. Once you find your name and select it from the drop down, you will then click on search. And that's going to give you your website URL here. So before we do anything with this URL, We'll go back to our class notes and we're gonna grab this iframe code here. So we're gonna select this code and right click and copy. Now we'll go back to our website. So just like for the mortgage calculator, we're gonna use a text box for this. And I'm gonna show you what happens when you add your text box without adding a widget. So I'm gonna grab a text box and drop it. So you'll see if we don't have a widget here, we don't have the option to configure and we don't have the option to save. You have to have a widget in your page in order to save any changes. So I'm gonna go back up here and I'm gonna grab a contact widget again. And now I'll go to my text box 
double click to edit, delete this text in here. And now I can paste that code here. Now for this one, before we set this up under that link button, we wanna change this highlighted URL to our custom URL. So we'll go to that color covered page and we're gonna grab this custom URL that was generated for us. So we'll copy that, go back over here. We're gonna highlight just the highlighted part of the text here and we'll paste that URL in here. So now that that URL is in there, go select the whole code and click that link button there. And that will activate the iframe page for you. So by selecting yourself as the agent under that search option, that would brand this to your name here and your contact information over here. So this will be completely branded to you as the agent. And it just gives them information on Keller Covered and Keller Mortgage. So once that's done, we can save changes. And again, we still have a few more pages to do, so we're not gonna publish quite yet. So once again, we will create new page in the top right on my agent site. So next we are going to do a what's my homework page. So for this page, we are going to use a contact form widget. So we'll just click and drag that over and configure widgets. And then we'll click on the contact form. And that will allow us to edit these boxes here. So if we go back to our class notes, we're gonna look for that page here, what's my homework? And it gives you a breakdown of what to choose to create this page in here as well. So for contact us, we're gonna grab that text here and go back to our website and add that into the contact us text box. Next, we have our body text. So we'll go back to our class notes and grab the body text here. And again, if you wanna customize this with different verbiage, wording, tailor it more to you, you definitely can. You can throw whatever text you want in these boxes. Next, we have our message placeholder text. Copy that. And then, so the message placeholder is the suggested text that is in the message box here. So we wanna tailor this to the page that we're creating. So we're gonna delete that and paste that text from our class notes there. So that just kind of lets them know what information you need them to key into that text box there. Now, as far as the name boxes and the contact information, those cannot be customized. Those are defaulted just to what they need to enter in those boxes. And then you'll have your phone number, which will pull from your marketing profile. So once those changes are done, you'll hit save and apply, and that will update your page here. So what this is gonna do is this is like a lead form. So once they complete this form, they will go into your command database as a new lead. And then you'll be able to reach out to them and create a CMA tailored to them to send over to them. If you do have a custom cloud CMA page that you are looking to add to your website, if you email us, we can take a look at getting that added for you. So now that we've got that form completed, we will save changes. And we are not going to publish. We have three more pages to go over, and then we will go through publishing all the pages that we've created. So we're going to create a new page again. 
So next we are going to do our testimonial capture page. So for this, we're gonna go to our widgets on the right and grab the testimonial capture form widget. This is the form that your clients can use to leave you a testimonial on your website. So we're gonna configure widget and then click on that testimonial widget. So for team name, so if you're on a team, you can put your team name in there or you can just put your name in there as the agent. And then for headline text, I'm gonna put in leave a review. Again, you can use any verbiage that you want on that text box there. And then for everything else in this widget, we are gonna leave it as is. We are not gonna alter any of this text. So once those two text boxes are completed, we will save and apply. So that will update over here on the left. So by entering our name in, that updated this to how would you rate your experience with Scott Leroy Marketing. If your clients are having any trouble submitting this form, you wanna confirm that they do have all the required fields filled out. We do get some feedback that clients are having trouble submitting their form and usually it's because they're not filling out all the required fields. So anything with the red asterisk symbol is gonna be required. So once those are filled out, they will be able to preview testimonial and then they'll be able to submit that testimonial. So once your widget is updated, we can save changes. And then next we will add the testimonial list page. And you can name your page, whatever you want to. You can just simply leave it testimonials. You can name it reviews. You can add a custom title, like see what our clients are saying. However you wanna word your page title, you can add that in there. So you have the option to choose from the testimonial carousel or the testimonial list. So the difference between those is the carousel will have your testimonials side by side and the list is going to list them down your page. So we're gonna use the testimonial list for this one. So once you have your chosen option in here, we will configure widget and that's automatically gonna bring up our testimonial widget to configure here. So if we go to our class notes, you can find the testimonial pages on the first page. So we'll go up to the top here. So for our display page, we can set the headline as client reviews, or again, you can use any verbiage that you would prefer to. So headline text, and then intro text. And then next we have client details. So this is where you can choose what can be viewed on your testimonials. So if you want it to just show their first name, you can uncheck the checkbox for last initial. If you don't want it to show their client sense date, you can uncheck that. So you can pick and choose what you want to show up on your page. And then next you have your section to select testimonials. So when people submit a review on your testimonial capture page, those do not automatically show up on your website. You have to manually add those through this widget, which is good that way if anyone leaves you a bad review, you don't have to worry about that showing up on your website since you have to go in and manually add those. So to get that added, there will be a browse testimonials button. So once people leave testimonials, you'll be able to see them listed here. 
So if they're not on your website yet, you'll just simply see all testimonials listed. And then once you click on the check box for the testimonial, that adds it to your website. So if we wanted to remove one, we could simply uncheck it from the top and that will bring it down to the bottom list again. So anything on this all testimonials list is not live on your site. Only the ones under the selected list will be showing up on your website. So once you have those selected, you can hit continue at the bottom, save and apply, and that will update with the testimonials that you have selected for your website. If you have reviews on another platform, say like Zillow or something like that, that you want to add to this page, those would need to be added manually. So to do that, you would go to your testimonial capture page and type those reviews in, and then you would be able to go in here and add them to your website. If you have trouble with that, you can also send them over to us in a Google Doc and we can add them to your website for you. You can have up to 10 testimonials on your site at a time. Keep in mind that there is not an option at this time to sort your testimonials. It does list them from oldest to newest. So once we have that completed here, we will save changes. And we're not gonna publish yet because we're gonna go over one more page. So the next page we are gonna do will be our last one. So I'm gonna show you how to create a custom page by using a Google Doc. So for this, I'm gonna do a sold properties page because there is not currently an option in command to add sold properties to your website. So I'll show you how you can do that manually. So we're gonna create a new page on agent site. So again, first thing I'm gonna do is rename it. So for this, we are going to use a text box. So we will grab our text box under content box. And then again, we will have to have a widget in here to save any changes. So we will grab our contact widget here. So what we wanna do for this is create a Google doc and have our custom content set up in our Google doc the way that we want it to look. So if you want your information to be centered on your website page, you wanna be sure that it's centered on your Google doc. So if I select all of this, and then up here, you can select your alignment. So just be sure that that is centered. When you are adding photos to this page, we do recommend that you are uploading them from your computer and not pasting them in here as sometimes that can cause them to show up as a broken image later. To add images, you would simply click on insert and then image. I'm in a view only mode, so I'm not able to add images right here. But when you're sent into your Google account and setting up your Google doc, you will have that option here. So you would go under insert image and then there will be an option to upload from your computer. So that's how you would wanna add your images in there. You can customize your text with your font options and your size options up here, however you want it to view on your page. And then once you have your doc set up the way that you want it to look on your website, what we're gonna do is select the whole page. So you can click and drag to highlight it. Or if you click on your page and on your keyboard, hold down control and then A, that will highlight your whole page as well. So once we highlight all of that, we're gonna right click and copy. And then we're gonna go over to our website and we're gonna double click on our text box and delete that text. And then we are going to right click and paste. So that will paste in our text from our Google Doc. And again, it's gonna show up with the format that we have originally set up. So if we did not have that alignment centered and it was left aligned, then it would show up on our website page on the left rather than centered. 
So it's very important to be sure that you have your alignment set up properly. So once you have that done, you can save changes. And now this is the last page that we are creating. So now I'm gonna go ahead and click yes to publish and we'll start publishing our pages. Now, I do like to point out that this page will not update automatically. You will have to manually update this. So if you need to remove or add anything to the page, we would recommend making those changes in your Google Doc and then just repasting that in here with your changes. So I'm gonna click on yes to publish. So once we click on yes, when it asks if we want to publish our page, that automatically brings us to our agent site pages to publish those. If by some chance you accidentally select no, or you clicked out of it for any reason and you're not sure how to get to this spot, I'll show you from the beginning of consumer. So if you go to your consumer tab, this is your main page with your pages listed. So if we go to the top right and click on site and app settings, we'll be able to access that here under agent site pages. So now we're gonna start adding our pages by clicking the add page button here. And so you'll see all of our new pages that we just created are listed here. So we'll start from the first one and work our way up. So you'll just simply click on the circle next to the page name and continue. So for each of these pages, we're gonna have three things to do. We're gonna set our page title, our URL slug, and our SEO description. So for this one, this is our download my app page. Now, when you are doing your URL slug, you can't use any spaces or special characters. However, you can add dashes in there to separate your words. And you'll see if I was to add a space or any other characters, it's gonna give me a red message stating that that is not allowed. So once we have those three boxes filled in, we will hit save. And then you'll get this green banner at the top stating that it was successfully saved. So now that page is live on the site. So we're gonna go through and do that for each of the pages we created. So this is why it's important to name your pages when you're creating them, because if we did not rename them, we would have all those random numbers and letters, and we wouldn't know which page on this list was that page. So you're gonna go through and fill these out for every page that you've created. And you can use whatever verbiage or wording that you want to for your page titles and your SEO descriptions. You can make them as detailed or custom as you would like to. few more to go. And once I finish adding these, we will then go into our website and see what each of these pages look like live once they have been published to your website.
And last is our custom page. So that was our last one there. So now we'll go into our website and see how those all look now that they are published. So at the top, if I go to the agent site pages here, that will take us back to our main page. So you'll see on the right side, those eyeballs are now teal instead of gray because they are now live and active. So if we click on our URL here at the top, this will open our website for us. So now if we click on our drop down menu, we will see all of those pages that we just added here. So we'll click through each of them just to see how they look. So we have our download our app. We have our mortgage calculator. So you'll see this is live and active on here. So if they change this information, it will automatically update here on the right. So they'll be able to update that to their standards of what they are looking for here. Next, we have our school search. So here's our active map here, our school list, and our search option. Next, we have our Keller covered page. So again, this will be customized with your name up here and your email. Next, we have our What's My Home Worth page. So there's that contact form that we customized here. And then we have our testimonial capture page. Here's where they can fill out their review for you. Then we have our testimonial list page. And last, we have our custom page that we created. So that wraps up our website 201 for today. Thank you for joining. I hope you all have a great rest of your week. If you have any trouble or have any questions with anything, you can reach out to us by email at support at scottleroymarketing.com. Again, that's support at scottleroymarketing.com. Have a great week.